the term macro has come to have two meanings in modern photography. One is loose and applied to zoom lenses and really means close focusing. Close enough it is true for many. But this lower comes firmly in the true macro camp. It focuses not only to the classic one-to-one -one ratio, where objects are recorded life-size on the sensor, but at two-to-one. Given that the Micro Four Thirds sensor has an imaging width of roughly 17 millimeters, that means that an object 8.5 millimeters, or a third of an inch, will fill it. Do that on a monitor, and it'll be roughly 50 times life-size. It can lead to some startling images, but you do have to work to get them. Depth of field is zilch at two to one. For me, the technical difficulties are part of the enjoyment of macro work, but the work you put in is reflected in the range of creative images that can be made from everyday objects. I'd never noticed that the Queen wore earrings on her profile coin image. The huzzy. The lower shows its focal length in EXIF, and the aperture and shutter speeds being used, stabilisation and all the stuff you might need. All it lacks is autofocus, which at macro distances I don't use anyway, preferring to move the lens and camera together, with a focus ring used for fine adjustment. The obvious comparison is with the Libus's 60mm macro lens, but with autofocus that's a slightly different beast. The lower feels a little heavier and of the same overall quality as the Olympus. The Olympus has a much longer focus throw from 1 to 1 to infinity than the lower does from 2 to 1 to infinity. But when using manual focus, I definitely prefer the shorter throw. The lower doesn't have anything fancy about it. It's a workmanlike tool to do a job. Put it on the camera and focus, that's it. It sounds easy, doesn't it? Until you find that even at 1 to 1 and F16, let alone 2 to 1, you have less than 1 millimeter depth of field. When you get down to macro distances, as I said, moving the whole shebang is a better option. I actually like 50 millimeters, or thereabouts, 2 times telly, for landscape, and the lower is just dandy for that. Plenty sharp and easy to focus, especially with peaking engaged. It's also a good portrait lens, though you may want to ease off some of the sharpness if you photograph a partner and wish to live. To judge the macro performance, the first thing you need is a solid tripod, and preferably a micro four thirds camera with focus peaking and focus magnification. Secondly, given the extreme level of magnification possible, is a remote release via phone and the use of electronic shutter or electronic front curtain if the light is low. What really distinguishes a macro lens from a close focusing one is that the macro will be designed to operate at close distances, keeping the field of view flat, where on a close focus lens the edges will go off. Ditto control of aberrations. Any photographer who has a collection of film slides and wants to convert them to digital will benefit from the two times life size macro because it allows you to crop them as well as simply copy. You could scan the slides at the Micro Four Thirds sensor and this lens will give better results. It's not flashy or exciting, but copying of slides and documents is a forte of lenses like this. As you can see here, image quality in technical terms has moved on somewhat from Kodachrome, though whether there is any benefit to it is a moot point. At the elevated levels of sharpness we are talking with good macros, comparisons are a bit pointless. But so am I, so here is one between the Olympus and the Lauer at one to one anyway. Summing up, obviously a lens like this won't appeal to everyone. But because it is labelled macro doesn't mean that macro is all it does. A 50mm lens is ideal for portraits and landscapes, and manual focusing is pretty easy with focus peaking. The two times telephoto effect also keeps you a reasonable distance away from your subject with macro, enabling the use of ring flash. The reality is most buy a macro lens for macro work. And if you like to take things to extremes, two to one is, well, twice as good as one to one. Especially since the extra magnification doesn't involve any appreciable downside. Here's an example of two to one on a small insect. In the interest of full disclosure, I should point out this insect is not stunned or pining for the countryside, it's dead. It's high res, and though I could have done focus stacking with it for pictorial effect, I like the tiny depth of field. The price of this lens is comparable to Olympus's 16mm macro, so it's a straight choice really between autofocus or closer focus. I can almost hear Spinal Tap's Nigel Tufnell say it. This one goes up to two. Thanks for watching.